Um, to go back to depression, there's, well, there's one further thing I'd like to say. Um, that at the Tavistock we're very proud of an uh, extremely important and unusual study that we carried out. Uh, it was led uh, by colleagues here in the adult department, uh, particularly uh, uh, Dr David Taylor. That was a long-term project uh, looking at the effects of psychotherapy uh, on a population of patients um, who suffered from long-term severe depression, sometimes called treatment-resistant depression, sometimes called chronic depression, and so on. And the patients had treatment with individual psychotherapy uh, for 18 months, and then were followed up for a number of years afterwards. And the outcome was impressive. That is, um, in terms of measurement of the number of people who had improved greatly in terms of symptomatology was high. As high as, for example, a lot of the antidepressant studies. Actually higher, higher. Um, but one of the important ingredients of this study was that they followed up patients for years after the treatment. And what they found, I suppose we might have theoretically hoped for, but wouldn't thought would have been proved. And that was that in the years after the study, the patients continued getting better. So as if they'd been set on a kind of trajectory, the way I would think of it is that, for instance, people who've never managed to begin to face some of the difficulties of their, of their lives and their personal relationships, make a bit of a move, which may be a small move, but that move is a bit like a vector, opens up all sorts of other possibilities. So that as they go on, they might start there, but then they go up and up as life goes on, because more becomes possible. None of the other follow-up studies on depression did that. But something that was very unfortunate about this is that the study was, of course, included in the research protocol for the NICE guidelines. Um, and the reasons for that are complicated, and some of it quite technical, and I'm not really able to give detail on, nor would necessarily be appropriate. But I think the most important overarching thing to say is that the um, data analysis, the statistical methods used, all assumed the medical model of an event, um, rather than the kind of model that psychotherapy assu assumes, which is more like, a, if you like, a longer-term process. So the, they didn't include, for example, the follow-up data over two years, and compared it, so they took the um, outcomes only at the end of treatment, and not the follow-up studies over two years. And the follow-up studies, of course, are very, very important because they show that um, a development has been set in motion which continues, which none of the other treatment methods did. Other things that emerged from that study were uh, very important in terms not just of the, um, the good outcomes, but showing the kind of thing that, uh, that, that uh, um, I'd mentioned before, but, but if you like, proving it. And that is that the patients who suffered from severe depression of this type, and most of them have had all sorts of treatments already, they might have had inpatient admissions, they might have had various antidepressants, uh, uh, various other forms of therapy, is that these people had been unwell in one way or another for most of their lives, often since adolescence, sometimes even before. And the patients recognise that and it becomes more evident as you get to know them. And therefore, that in a way blurs the line between something called illness and something called a kind of personality that's vulnerable in certain ways, that displays the vulnerability uh, under certain conditions, obviously internal and external. 